Ever since medieval times, and most likely long before, there have been two camps of thought on the space between the stars and the sky at night. One camp believing that it is emptiness and nothingness, and another camp believing that it's, it, it, there is a substance between them, that it is something and that became known as the aether or the ether we'll just call it the ether for simplicity and um, the question is which is true can we determine that in the year 2015 that's what this video is about and we're going to delve into that with the history and so on many experiments were conducted to try to determine if there was an aether, an ether or not. Uh, the most famous of which is the Michelson-Morley experiment which is depicted here in a diagram in which they shot a beam of light in the direction of the path of the sun, earth around the sun and then also in a direction perpendicular to that to try to determine if the ether had any effect on the velocity of light and the conclusion of the experiment was that it did not however the in, the person who introduced <laughs> the Lorentz transformation which is Lorentz had something to say about this and um, we'll get into that next because it's quite relevant but before I get into Lorentz we must admit that Einstein took it ad hoc that the speed of light was an absolute and went ahead and wrote the special rel theory of relativity but ironically they were good friends he, he and Lorentz and it was originally called the Lorentz Einstein theory and Lorentz and Einstein were good friends and Lorentz used um, length contraction to explain how it could be an effect of the ether that caused the experiment to show equal velocities in both directions and um, more in a moment this photo was taken of Lorentz and Einstein in about 20 or 21 and it's rumored that Einstein in a lecture in Lorenz's hometown actually admitted that an ether must exist um, but it was discarded by the the physicist of the day as being unnecessary because you got the same results both way <clears throat> but time has changed times have changed and there's more to the picture now Einstein was uh, in a way trapped into creating general relativity because of the f somewhat failure of special relativity to explain it all and Nikola Tesla pictured here is another one of the individuals who believed there was an ether and he commented after the invention of general the publication of general relativity that he did not believe space was curved which is part of that theory um, and that space was something not nothing otherwise how could a massive body affect nothingness and the story gets deeper by the moment and more curious by the moment it should be noted that at the same time that uh, Einstein and Lorentz and Tesla were having a go around about the whole thing a fellow named George Gurdjieff, G.I. Gurdjieff was <laughs> teaching a thing called the Law of Seven in which he stated that nothing, there are no straight lines in nature including motion 
motion cannot travel in a straight line, which means there can be no linear inertial frame of reference, which special relativity kind of relied upon, which is why it is only partially true and only for a short distance. Um, he was definitely a contributor to the logic which came later, which we'll get into. Gurdjieff's Law of Seven stated that there had to be shock points along any line because the line would not go straight in order to reach any destination or any conclusion of an event a shock a couple of shocks had to be applied along the way in order to reach that destination and we now know today that there is no such thing as a linear um, inertial frame of reference. The reason that there can be no linear for, uh, inertial frame of reference or linear motion is because of gravitation. Although we don't really understand it at this point, it affects everything and there is only the linear frames of reference and motion unless you correct the uh, direction. Neither Lorentz, um, Tesla, or Gurdjieff could say what the a ether consists of. Um, probably the most interesting conception of what it might be was by P.D. Auspinsky, pictured here who wrote the book Tertium Organum in uh, which was published in 1912 which Tertium Organum means the third canon of thought and he proposed that the fourth dimension may be the distance between objects that what we perceive as motion is actually in reality extension in time or in space and that there is no separation between objects in the universe because of this dimensionality. Um, so that when an, a, a cause happens, the effect will happen instantaneously at a distance, which brings us to current date of 2015, which I'll get into next. Uh, Spensky literally um, implied that there is such a thing as a time body, that the past, the present, and the future are not separated, and that the objects in space and time are not separated. Um, and within the last five to seven years, we have set a world record of uh, quantum transportation, teleportation of a photon affecting 3,000 atoms at a distance of 143 kilometers instantaneously in the Canary Islands from one island to another through the air without a cable of any kind and no delay time violating the speed of light limit supposedly and um, this is nearly proof that there is an aether or an ether an ether and um, I will go on further for more proof in a moment. To determine the distance in space, no objects are necessary. It can be done without reference to any objects. <clears throat> And uh, the question is, when you have determined the distance between two points in space, have you determined the 
an amount of nothing or amount an amount of something that is the question um, we know that zero times any number is zero and yet in this formula shown here our range distance has a value of a positive value and also if you look at it from different perspectives you will see that there can be all the way from zero perpendiculars all the way up to four perpendiculars which would be the four dimensions Auspensky spoke of um, as a closing thought if space is nothing it cannot be heated therefore it should be absolute zero should be possible also if it's nothing an absolute vacuum should exist or can be created in fact neither one of these can be created or exist naturally in nature